Have you ever woken up from a very bad dream that left you feeling very disturbed to the core? In this video, I will share with you two major things to do immediately after a bad dream. You see, bad dreams are very common to most people. But bad dreams are not necessarily as bad as you might think. They are only bad when you fail to address the issues you saw in that dream. You see, the way the spirit realm works is that your spirit man is always active, even when you are sleeping, and so whenever God sees something bad about to happen, He will allow you to have a dream concerning that thing. This way, you will wake up and address it. In Job chapter 33, verses 14 to 18, the Bible says, For God speaks in one way and in two, though man does not perceive it. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls on men, while they slumber on their beds, then he opens the ears of men and terrifies them with warnings, that he may turn man aside from his deed and conceal pride from a man. He keeps back his soul from the pit, his life from perishing by the sword. Notice that these verses say he allows man to be terrified to keep him from danger, including dying by the sword. This means God allows you to see traps ahead of time so that you can escape them. The Bible says in Proverbs 1 verse 17, Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. That also means when the enemy sets a trap and you can see it, that trap becomes useless because you will not fall into it. But here is what you should do. Whenever you wake up from a bad dream, the very first thing you should do is reject it in intense prayer. Your dreams always act as a CCTV camera, simply capturing and revealing to you what is going on with your spiritual state. Sometimes this could mean God showing you what the enemy is plotting against you, or it could also mean God showing you things that are to happen so that you escape them. It is now up to you to either address it or ignore it. As soon as you wake up from a bad dream, get on your knees and start praying immediately. In fact, don't even say you will think about it later. Start addressing it immediately. If you had that dream in the middle of the night, wake up and pray against it at that time. Don't say you will wake up and pray against it in the morning because the enemy is way smarter than you think. If you allow it till morning, nine out of ten times, you might forget the details. And what you cannot remember cannot also be addressed. Even if what you saw in the dream was not life-threatening, still pray and ask God on how to navigate it. For example, when Pharaoh dreamt of famine in the land of Egypt, he saw thin cows swallowing up healthy cows. Under normal circumstances, these dreams would be called bad dreams, but they were technically not bad dreams. They would only have become bad if Pharaoh did nothing about it. That would have meant the actual famine would have affected the entire land of Egypt and possibly the whole world, because he would not have stocked up ahead of time. Some dreams are simply a wake-up call for you to take your life seriously. They only become bad when you ignore the dream. At that stage, whatever the enemy has planned will come to pass. If you saw yourself dying, begin to pray and declare scriptures that counteract what you saw. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Remember, you are your own prophet. This means God has also given you the power to prophesy and change situations. So if you see something in your dream you don't like, rise up and begin to reverse it. God gave you a mouth for a reason. In Mark chapter 11, verse 24, Jesus says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. This verse reminds us of the power of prayer and the importance of faith when we approach God. Declare scriptures to override what you saw in that dream. Even though bad dreams are often scary, they are simply revealing to you what's going on behind the scenes. God reveals to redeem. As you pray, begin to reject the content of the dream. Whatever was said to you or however you felt in the dream, renounce it in the name of Jesus. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4-5, to Paul writes, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty, through God, to the pulling down of strongholds. 
casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. In Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11, God declares, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. God's word is powerful and can nullify any negative impact of the dream. Declare scriptures that speak of God's protection, such as Psalm 91 verse 1, which says, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Use the authority given to you in Christ to cast down any evil imagination or thought that the dream may have planted in your mind. Now here's another crucial step. The next thing you should do after having a bad dream and praying is that don't tell anybody else about the dream at least for that time being unless you are not sure how to address it prayerfully. What I mean is, unless you're speaking to someone of higher spiritual ranking who can help you pray, such as a pastor or a mature prayer warrior, keep the dream to yourself. When you share a bad dream with others, you risk confirming its message and rejecting the prayers you've just made. In James chapter 3, verses 5 to 6, the Bible warns us about the power of the tongue, saying, Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. By speaking about the dream, you may unknowingly be setting in motion the very thing you're trying to prevent. You might start spreading fear and actually confirming those things you saw. If you have prayed against it and have believed God has put an end to it, you no longer need to keep spreading it about. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. However, if your spouse is a prayer warrior, you may share the dream with them. In Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9 it says, Two are better than one, because they have a good reward for their labor. Having a spouse who can stand with you in prayer can be a tremendous blessing and support in overcoming spiritual attacks. In addition to rejecting the dream and keeping silent about it, it's essential to fill your mind with God's word and worship. In Philippians chapter 4 verse 8, Paul advises, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. By focusing on the truth of God's word and the goodness of his character, you create an atmosphere of faith and peace that can dispel any lingering effects of the bad dream. Overturning bad dreams is a spiritual exercise that requires immediate action, confidentiality, and the Word of God. Remember to reject the dream in prayer, keep it to yourself unless necessary, and immerse yourself in scriptures. This way, you can stand firm in your faith and overcome any spiritual attacks that come your way. Remember, as a child of God, you have authority over your dreams. In Luke chapter 10 verse 19, Jesus says, Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You don't have to be a victim of bad dreams. Through prayer, faith, and the power of God's word, you can overturn them and walk in victory. Let us now go into a moment of prayers. Heavenly Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you for your word that guides us and protects us. Lord, we lift up every bad dream, every nightmare that has been sent from the enemy. We reject them in the name of Jesus. Your word says in Isaiah chapter 54, verse 17, No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. We declare that no negative dream will take root in our lives. Father, we ask for your divine protection, as stated in Psalm 91, verses 5 to 6. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. We stand on this promise, Lord, 
and declare that we are covered by your wings. Lord, give us the wisdom to keep our dreams confidential, sharing only with those who are spiritually mature and can help us pray. Help us to immerse ourselves in your word, to know your promises, and to declare them over our lives. We also pray for peace, as you have promised in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. We receive your peace, power, love, and sound mind, Lord. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. We trust in your protection and guidance. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you for watching. If you love our videos, please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel.